today we're going to talk about my music education background because that might be in some way useful to you. Music education, cool. So when I was a child, I had violin lessons. I don't remember them because I was a child and I think I stopped because my fingers hurt, which is fair because I was like five. There were music lessons at school, but I didn't think of them as music lessons at the time because it was just like a whole school assembly singing songs about Jesus and didn't really occur to me that that's what music was. Up till my early teens when I moved on to secondary school, which other parts of the UK call high school, by the way. We were supposed to have music lessons, but I think we had about a year's worth of lessons and then just no teacher and the lessons weren't particularly engaging or interesting and then I was quite sick for a while so yeah that didn't really happen basically is what I'm getting at I think because my father and brother were quite musical my parents decided that I was going to get piano lessons me trying to learn piano Gene Belcher style was apparently not good enough whatever so in my early teens, I had piano lessons for two or three years, I guess. They must have finished when I was about 15. At the time, they were a real chore. I didn't properly enjoy them. The piano music I enjoyed and the piano music I listened to, like blues, rhythm and blues, that kind of thing, was so different to what I was learning to play, I couldn't make the connection between music I enjoyed and music I was learning. In retrospect, looking back at it now, I use the fundamental music theory that I learn like every day and I use the piano, the actual playing piano technique, not every day but it's still really valuable and in terms of qualifications I did manage to get distinctions in grade one and two music theory. Around this time at school, again music GCC was an option but not having had any decent in-school lessons, I didn't see the point. In my mind at the time, I guess I thought music was just something that didn't happen in school. My piano lessons didn't end by choice, by the way. My teacher was handed some ridiculously prestigious job in the north of England, so he, he went to that, which is completely fair. When I decided to try guitar, that's where music became really fun. I taught myself for years. I had this one chord book, which was basic chords, basic strumming patterns uh, with a few backing tracks. So I used that. I tried to apply what I'd learned on piano to guitar. I tried to play along to the rock music I was getting into at the time. And I tried using tablature sites from the internet. YouTube wasn't around really at this point. It, it started in 2005, so it was there, but there weren't guitar lessons on it. There wasn't much on YouTube in 2005, so it, I couldn't have used it as the resource that it is today to learn guitar. Or if there were any lessons online at that point, it would have never occurred to me to have looked for them on YouTube. There were some good video lessons on the, the tab site I used, but they weren't regular because the guy that was doing them that was earning no money from them so there was no point for him really to do them regularly um so i couldn't have got a lot out of them long term that is basically what i did for four or five years and i actually did quite well for self-teaching but i was lucky to have that background where i knew more or less what to google if i couldn't work out what i was doing wrong uh, let me see, at that time I would have been at college as well when I was about 17. So when I was mid-late teens in sixth form college, I got really sick. As a result, I did really badly in my first year of uh, A-level exams, the AS exams. So bad that we weren't sure if I would get invited back for my second year. Because it was a medical thing rather than a laziness thing that meant I did really badly in the exams, they did invite me back in the end, but I would have had to study subjects that I didn't want to. So we fought that, and in the end, rather than studying three subjects I would have done crappily in, I studied two subjects which 
potentially I could have done really well in. I couldn't do music or music technology though, and that really annoyed me, but I couldn't do it because I didn't have a grade five or music GCSE. So I went back to studying classics and philosophy. I would actually recommend studying philosophy to anyone just because of the way it allows you to rationally argue situations and logically and objectively work out uh, problems. So I would actually really recommend doing philosophy. And if you watch this channel, you probably know that I can argue the toss about anything. I'm sure that's probably really annoying, actually. So I couldn't study music in a classroom environment, and that really annoyed me because I could play, and I was pretty good, and I was in bands and stuff. So I started looking into what music education was available to me the second I left sixth form. I think I worked for two or three years. The first job I had actually uh, helped me break into these blues jams, which I went to for like every week for two or three years. Not technically education, but I learned a lot by playing those. Eventually, when I was about 20, I found a course in Norwich, which is about an hour and a half on the train from home, at a place called Access to Music. Now, you might have heard of Access to Music as the place Ed Sheeran went. At the time, it was the place Ed Sheeran was attending. He wasn't a big deal then. He was sort of on the upwards curve about to take off. Before you ask, no, I didn't meet Ed Sheeran. I don't remember if he was there as a student when I was there, or if he was doing guest lectures, but he was there for some reason. I just don't remember in what capacity, and no, I never spoke to him. So how did I get into Access? I turned up to an open day with a guitar having not booked an interview. I got a tour around the site with a group of other people, and then they managed to find a slot for me to get interviewed in. I improvised some stuff to a backing track they gave me, told them I wanted to be a rock god, they laughed at me, and eventually offered me a position there on the provision that I spent the next five months before the course brushing up on all the technique and theory and knowledge stuff that I just didn't have because I was self-taught. So I found a private tutor who was, I believe, a jazz bassist. He was really helpful and actually really affordable as well. I learned basic dominant chord shapes. I learned how to actually use the modes, harmonic minor scales, started playing in 5, 4, and 7, 8, started using my ear to translate vocal lines into guitar lines. It was an intense five months. Really mental, but I wanted to do really well at Access to Music because the resources they had were next level and I really liked the teachers having met them for like 20 minutes. So I put a lot into that and my first few weeks at Access to Music were crap. I wasn't in a great place lifestyle wise. I was quite arrogant as well. I'd never been in a classroom environment learning music like that before. It was a real upheaval and it didn't help that I was in my early 20s in a classroom full of students who were like 16 or 17, some of them better musicians than I'll ever be. However, I stuck with it because my deposit was non-refundable. I had the best two years of my life, not just my educational life, not just my musical life, the best two years. Axis had the best guitar and instrument tutors, they had the best music business teachers, the best stagecraft teachers, music theory, music history, promotion, journalism. I got to record in their studio with producer students, I got to perform at the Waterfront and the Brickmakers in Norwich as part of the course, and I was basically handed a band for two years, all of whom were just next level musicians and it was a real challenge to keep up with them. I worked out that my understanding of theory was really helping me write music and write decent guitar lines, so I played to that strength, and that's something I still do today, working out what it is you're good at and how to completely abuse that skill is really important to getting ahead in music, I think, and that's what they allowed me to do. If you want to be a professional musician, you need to attend Access to Music. There's colleges all over the country, and you can enrol, I think, from the age of 16. 
I should have gone to Access to Music instead of going to Sick Form, but I didn't know about it. It's not exactly a regret, but I do wonder what would have happened if I did that. I took every opportunity from my time at Access. I came out with distinctions in every subject, including several optional ones. And that is where my music education ends, other than, I think, three or four free short courses on Coursera, which is cool, by the way. I didn't need to go to university or study any further because I'd learned how to market myself as a musician and I'd learned the realities of being a professional musician, which thanks to access to music, I am. I would absolutely consider studying music at university level, but the cost versus the benefit at the moment is just, it's not a good deal. So... I'm basically okay where I am. So there, that kind of turned into an advert for access to music a little bit, but I should say I'm not endorsed by them, although I totally would be, and I can't recommend them enough. And I know that the students I've sent there over the years certainly feel the same. I hope this video has been useful. Please don't try to live your life identical to mine, because I can't guarantee you'll end up where I am especially in regard to the pre-access to music era. If you take anything away from this video, I would suggest if you're interested in music, learning it as early as you possibly can. Um, if you have the option to learn at GCSE, you should. If you have the option to learn an instrument, you should. I'm uploading videos every Friday at 4 p.m. GMT because that's the time in the country I live. They're almost always specific to guitar. Sometimes it's lifestyle stuff. Sometimes it's specific licks and riffs and theory stuff. Sometimes it's about products or effects or production. If any of that sounds good to you, then please subscribe and I will see you next week. Toodaloo.